Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all. Firstly, I will I would like to make sure that I'm I'm clearly heard and you know uh, rather than you know I I'll be spending like the next few hours talking and then suddenly I realize nobody is there listening. Uh, thumbs up, please. Can we have some response <laughs> uh, that you can hear me? Okay. That one? Okay, thanks Farah Hani. Okay, so Liz Farah lah. Bahaya, yeah. uh, Noor Azila. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Firstly, thank you, uh, Sengpa, Prof Tong, for inviting me. Um, I guess I, I was kind of inviting myself. Is it Sengpa? I was saying that, uh, you know, anytime if you if you need me to, you know, slot into your uh, monthly How I Do It session, then I'll be, I'll be glad to, to help. And Alhamdulillah, I think uh, this has been sort of planned about two months ago. And uh, um, the topic is basically on clinical education. Yeah? <clears throat> um, and I put the new paradigm just to as, as uh, a catchy uh, terminology yeah, for us to, uh, you know, you want to listen to something, you would like to have some kind of newer things. Yeah. Uh, so here, here goes. Uh, but later on, maybe you can give me the feedback. This is not really new, Prof. <laughs> and so, and so I think okay, that is also quite fair. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me just share my slide, and I'm actually more keen to um, have the discussion rather than you know just one way, one direction, because that would would be not the paradigm that I'm going to talk about, <laughs> isn't it, Jennifer? Yeah? Uh, okay. So uh, here goes. Um. Well, uh, I guess when I made up my mind that I want to be, uh, uh, you know, the teacher who's teaching medical student, that was partly because I was greatly inspired by, by the teachers that has, that has taught me. Okay, and of course, I'm sure that has been something uh, more or less the fire that's still burning inside all of us who, are, who are now attending this session. Uh, I will start with this quote. Uh, 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 Arthur Watt um, quote this famous this famous quote of the, med the mediocre doctor tells the good teacher explains the superior teacher demonstrates and the great teacher inspires yeah so all of us most probably we are inspired to be that great teacher who inspires others yeah um, and <clears throat> uh, this is when you know that um, your great deed then Sengfar is not going to stop uh, you know when you are alive but it will it is also something that you will, I mean, it will flow into your grave, yeah, inshallah. Now, <clears throat> let me define myself very clearly in the very beginning, uh, not to sort of, uh, uh, you know, discriminate or uh, put aside those who are not in this, this category. I think this, uh, how do it, uh, how I do it session is actually open for all, yeah, but for today's session, yeah, because it is talking about clinical education, I would, I would like to, uh, uh, you know, specifically dedicate this to those who are, you know, who fit into this definition of clinician educators. Uh, these are clinicians who are active in health professional practice, who applies theory to educational uh, practice, yeah, uh, so theory to practice, yeah, and engage in education scholarship. So I guess we, we should have this kind of flair to, uh, you know, uh, get to know more about, about educational theory and to be informed whether what we are doing is the right thing or not. Yeah? And if you can have some kind of credential uh, that certify you have actually gone that direction of you know, equipping yourself with, uh, with educational uh, you know, skills and, and competencies. So this would definitely be the definition that fits you. And uh, this is also another very important uh, area serve as a consultant to other health professionals on education issues. I'm, I'm sure, Sengfa, you know, most of my slide, uh, you know, Prof. Tong might have seen it, but this is, this is kind of the latest slide that I added on because in this definition yeah, by uh, Shabino and, and uh, Frank and Snell, these are, you know, uh, names that are really big names in medical education. The fact that the additional and serves as a consultant to other health professionals on education issue, I think it fits every one of us who are now in uh, these uh, teaching hospitals yeah, uh, all over the country. So uh, we definitely have to be, um, I'm not saying that we should 
sort of elevate ourselves above others, no, but we are definitely have more responsibility to make sure that the education, the teaching of the you know, future uh, specialists and uh, health uh, providers in this country is going to be uh, really, you know, uh, um, as how we want it to be, okay? Uh, and, and we are not just consultant in our own uh, uh, clinical aspect, but uh, uh, expertise, but we are being consulted on the educational issues, okay? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Then uh, I would like to also quote this yeah, uh, from a very learned teacher, John Cotton Dana, who says, who dares to teach must never cease to learn. Um, I guess this was one of the quotes that, that sort of snapped me into reality, you know, that uh, as a teacher, those who dare seem to, to teach, okay, must never cease to learn. So it, it is kind, uh, it is like a, um, it's like a joke to me, you know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, we, we have this, I do not know, I, I guess we inherited this. Uh, once you become a specialist, um, you know, it might be some kind of grandiosity, but we, we think that uh, we are going to be great teacher. We will be very, you know, we can actually teach this, this subject of our expertise to others. Uh, and we pay very little respect to the fact that education is actually another profession. So for us who are clinician educators, we are putting a very big responsibility on our shoulders, not just to become clinician, but also to become educators. And hence, you know, we, we definitely have to go to school again in, in order to be good educators. Unfortunately, that might not be, you know, uh, uh, the, the pathway that we have gone through uh, because we have seen our teachers, you know, the, they become consultant and they become teachers and we will really teach how our teachers taught us. Okay? Uh, and I think, <clears throat> well, uh, if you do that, <laughs> if you actually stick to that way of uh, teaching others by seeing other people teaching, and I guess we are so used to, you see, like uh, see one um, and do one and then teach one, <laughs> you know, I, I guess that is not the way that uh, education, especially in medicine, should, should happen, yeah? Uh, and of course, for today's topic, we are going into clinician, uh, clinical education over the century, but I'm not really going to go into detail into the, you know, the articles and the journals. It is, it is basically from, from where I've, I've seen it, okay? And because this is a how I do it session, yeah? So this is, uh, I hope as I ask, uh, Prof Tong, yes, now there, there will be a little bit more of storytelling, yeah? Uh, it is allowed, okay. So if you're talking about <clears throat> um, old paradigm, yeah? The old paradigm, you, you might have this in your mind, okay? This, uh, you know, those, those days where, where students of medicine will learn from the amphitheater and one patient will be in the middle there. And, and when you're talking about the new paradigm, yeah? You might have this in your mind, okay? There's just one student, no teacher, and you know, it's just being, you know, having all this technology uh, around him or her. But I must never forget to remind uh, myself and all of you that we definitely have the fundamental principle that would not change, even that we, if if there is any newer uh, paradigm after this, and and this is some things that guide us all along, yeah. Uh, and while we're talking about the fundamental about clinical education yeah, over the centuries, I would like to, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure this, this person uh, needs no more introduction, but some of you might want to, you know, uh, a bit more about uh, Faxner, Abraham Faxner, uh, who has actually, um, he founded this Faxner report yeah, uh, in 1910 that actually sparked the reform of medical education in the United States and also in Canada. And I, I, I'm you know, I'm very fascinated by this quote, you know, from him, he's saying that medical education is not just a program for building knowledge and skill in its recipient. That was what he observed all along that has happened, yeah? Uh, it is also an experience which creates attitudes and expectations. So if you are very, you know, familiar with experiential learning theory, so this is really about learning by experience. It's not just, you know, uh, having the student uh, you know, to just put, all the knowledge and, and maybe teaching the skill, but it is actually in creating attitudes and expectation. And uh, I, I especially would like to draw the attention to expectation because 
I guess our, our learners these days have their own expectation. Our society, our patients have their own expectation. And of course, we ourselves have our own expectation. Not to mention that the hospital, uh, the university that we are in now, you know, have very high expectation as well. So how do we juggle all this expectation? It's part of and parcel of education and of course no medical education as well. Yeah. So uh, this is just the gist of the factional report. I think I need to put it up here yeah, because uh, I, I know how busy we are in, in order to read about the you know, history of medical education. But this is actually the report that uh, you know, um, responsible to increase the quality of physician then significantly. And medicine becomes something well respected, you know, rather than just maybe practice by quack, you know, doctors before that. And um, and basically in this report, you know, uh, it is being stated that the physician must receive at least the minimum of six years, yeah, uh, after eight years of post-secondary education, uh, and typically in an educa uh, university setting. So with this report, you know. Uh, educating medical uh, uh, doctors after that become more organized and as how we know it now. And of course, it must be based on research yeah, and in the field of uh, basic you know, uh, human physiology, biochemistry. Uh, and of course, the research must be following the protocol as other scientific research. And the last bullet is also important. There must be some kind of uh, licen uh, licensing or credentialing. Yeah? And this is mainly uh, to... Uh, uh, adhere to the quality, yeah. So this is actually, uh, I guess, when you read this report, so uh, this is this is really what we have followed and we have improved on it, yeah. <clears throat> now, of course, the world has changed, and the world and we must change with it, yeah. And I'm sure now I'm not going to spend time in describing what happened. Now everybody knows that because we are all in the same uh, circumstances. We are in the same storm, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. But we are. On our own, our own different boats. <laughs> yeah? You might be having, <clears throat> you know, a ship or maybe just a small uh, rowing boat. Uh, but we are now in the same storm. And of course, uh, you must be, you know, you must have heard about VUCA, B U C A, where the world, the world is so volatile, it is so uncertain, it is so complex and complicated, and A for ambiguity. So it is so ambiguous. Yeah. So. Of course, we have to change so many things. We are, in fact, our comfort bubble has, has burst, and now we are thrown into our, you know, a fear zone. And definitely, we have to learn how to, you know, live after this pandemic, which is definitely going to be, you know, a different world altogether. Yeah. <clears throat> now, basically, this is the old school versus the new school. So, uh, thank you. If I, we can stop. At this slide, you know, when I'm talking about the new paradigm in clinical education, but this is just to you know to see that the, the changes uh, are really tremendous. It is like 180 degree, yeah, uh, from a time-based uh, curriculum it now become outcome-based, you know. But the most important yeah, is actually the passive learning to become active learning, and for that, you know, our our method must be different. So the most significant paradigm shift that I'm going to talk about is. You know, the shift between this teacher-centeredness to learner-centeredness. Uh, I'm sure some of the, you know, audience uh, in this time, I said, ah, these are all concepts, lah, Alina, you still talk about this. Uh, I'm afraid I still have to talk about this because uh, I am quite certain that not many of us um, under really understand what learner-centeredness means. Yeah? And, and for that matter, uh, Prof Tong, I would like to use my, my time eh, to sort of look into this, and this is actually the, the new paradigm that we have to look into. Okay, so anyone of you who actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, come to this uh, meeting room uh, expecting me to talk about all the virtual uh, reality and whatnot, definitely that's not what I'm going to talk about. In fact, kind of simple, I think we started to have an overdose of that. Everybody's talking about it, yeah, so... So I decided to say, no, I'm not going to, you know, go down that, that lane again. No, but, but now it's actually to really go to the, to the gist of it. Do we really understand why we need all those technology? Yeah? I mean, it is mainly because we now have shifted from teacher-centeredness to learner-centeredness. And that is why there are some, still some people who are so uncomfortable or, you know, basically still adamantly do not want to change or, in fact, still says that, you know, all the simulation... It's not going anywhere, uh, basically because that person is still trapped within the paradigm of teacher-centeredness. Yeah. Now, 
Uh, this is a busy slide, but basically, you know, there are so many changes <laughs> uh, when you are looking into, you know, the approach of teacher centeredness and learner centeredness. Yeah. And of course, uh, when, when you're talking about teacher centeredness, this is where the focus is really the teacher. You know, you are the, the expert. You know, people will kiss, you know, the, the ground that you walk on. Okay. Uh, but, but when you are talking about learner centeredness, okay, the focus is now on the learners and the teacher. You know, the, Unlike those who think that this is now on the learners, no, no, it is also on the teacher because now the teacher become, you know, a co-learner. Oh, thank God, this is another, you know, another, another paradigm shift. You know, how can I become a learner? You know, when when the student are here to learn from me, okay. So basically, you know, these are these are the. Uh, I'm not going to go into one by one, but you see, this is this is definitely the biggest paradigm shift as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and and. I guess I have something to uh, a confession to make, uh, Sengfa. You know, uh, as much as you know, I feel so enthusiastic and you know, energized. You know, when I first become a clinician educator, I think after five years, uh, I have a steam. You know, I become so <laughs> I would say demoralized. You know, and and um, I was thinking about when the when the you know academic world is really my cup of tea. You know, even though you know I'm. I feel very happy when I'm with my student, but very unhappy when I'm not with them. So, but then later on, even with the student, it's really a very dreadful, uh, you know, uh, experience. Like I, I started to think that the students are getting more and more stupid, <laughs> and, and I do not know where they come from. And uh, um, my teaching session, my my bedside teaching se session, usually it would be about you know one hour. Now it becomes shorter, you know, and and I think the shortest was. Hardly 15 minutes, same fun, because I actually stormed out of the, of the session because I was so angry with the student. I go, oh my God, you know, uh, and, and, and I actually went back. <laughs> I, I, I remember going down the basement and just start my car and I, I don't see the point of, you know, being there, you know, it's just, uh, it is so overwhelming. But it was there, you know, in that, in that, <laughs> that home, that, that, after, that uh, evening, yeah, when I, I, I drove home, I asked this question. Takkan student ikut yang bodoh kan? You know, uh, you know, they are definitely being screened just like how I was screened to be in medical school. They are supposed to be, you know, the cream of the cream. Uh, then suddenly I realized, you know, and it was very, it, it was a very frightening moment, I would say, when I said, is it the student or is it me? <laughs> is it me really, you know, who, who are not being able to to teach them. Uh, I remember I was, uh, that was really very painful, uh, you know, saying, you, you, you know, when you come to that kind of realization, you really want to say, no, 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 it's the student. <laughs> but I decided to give that, you know, some kind of space to look into that. And of course, yeah, I realized that I need to, to shift and to change my paradigm. So from this teacher-centeredness, uh, teacher-centered learning and teaching, where this is sage on the stage, you know, where everybody is just focusing on you and you are the one <clears throat> who talks so impressively. I have to change for my methods to be learner-centered. Now I have to be by their side. So from sage on stage, it's now guided by the side. Oh, and this is not easy, you know, this is, this is really, really not easy. It's like, you know, I have to relinquish my power my superhero power, you know, now I have to distribute it to other people. And, and of course, there are no other by, but my student. And how do they know what they need to learn? <laughs> you know, that was my first impression when I, you know, read about learner-centeredness or I started to, you know, hear people saying about learner-centeredness. But there was the time when I started to feel that, no, I need to also look into, you know, beside my ONG fraternity, I need to really look into education, yeah, <clears throat> because I'm very concerned. Uh, I guess the student, you know, we are, uh, we, we should not be messing up with our student future because, you know, these are, these are doctors who are going to treat you one day, isn't it, Sengfa? So I really need to do this job well. And then I found this, this quote around the same time, you know, the secret in education lies in respecting the student. Okay, this is another job. <laughs> this is like, oh, hold on, hold on. I thought the secret of education lies in respecting the teacher. Isn't that what we've been taught? <laughs> you know, it's always the teacher. But it's actually uh, a person really stick to this uh, when, you know, I, I read the article where he, he uh, suggested this. He was asked eh, by another educator, 
why why do you, did you say so and he said that it is the learner who actually hold the key to the door of the learning of his or her own particular learning process so we as teacher we have to persuade them in order to open that door for, for us so some of you who might you know i do not know you know if you are like five years into teaching profession you you might be feeling exactly as how i felt you know uh 15 years ago, <laughs> okay. uh, and, and that's exactly a very normal kind of uh, uh, feeling. But I was very fortunate to have, you know, uh, encounter this this quote, and then I start to look at my student from a different different perspective. So after that, I realized that the way to go is actually to to deliver education through this learner centeredness. Yeah, and uh, well, of course, the student is almost always more motivated to practice. You know, if he lives this lesson, you know, where you are the teacher feeling capable rather than we make them feeling like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, feel, feeling like dumb, you know, like well, you, you really sort of degrade them and you, know, you really, <laughs> you, uh, sometimes our comparison is a bit too much that they, they started to doubt themselves. And if that is actually how your student leave your session, I guess we are not really talking about learner-centeredness here. So learner-centered uh, education is really yeah, uh, a framework, a methodology, where we position our learner at the heart of the uh, instructional process. Okay, uh, uh, this is actually the, the teaching uh, uh, learning method will center around the learners. Yeah? And, and the learners are not just passive recipient of information as how in the traditional teacher-centered uh, approach. And uh, the perspective is actually focusing on the individual learners, yeah. Uh, and this is looking into uh, personalized. This is more like personalized. So we, you must remember, all your learners have their own profile. Okay, they will bring in their hereditary uh, traits, their experience, their personality, their talent, their previous experience, their interests, yeah, uh, and their needs and their ability. And of course, the teaching learning methods that we are using. Ah, this can be the virtual, the goggles and everything. Yeah, These are just teaching learning methods that <clears throat> we as teacher must be able to sort of pair up which method is more suitable for which learner. So that is actually, you know, the basic, uh, uh, you know, understanding about learner centeredness. Yeah. So this is the tenet. Yeah. Uh, it relies on uh, active learning more than passive learning. Emphasize on deep learning and understanding, you know, in, it is really higher order thinking skill in the Bloom taxonomy. Uh, we will increase responsibility and accountability on the student. I love this part. Okay, the student now take full responsibility on their learning. You know, so far we used to say, you know, we, we would like to teach everything for your student. And then suddenly if they fail that, and then you feel that, you know, it is you. <laughs> but now, and the student will always say, ah, that's it, you know, so now no more, <laughs> no more. You know, and it, it, of course, it increases the sense of autonomy to the, uh, in the learners. There is definitely more interdependence between teacher and learner. Yeah, there is mutual respect as well yeah, in the relationship. And number seven is very important. You know, the approach is always reflective. It is through reflection. You know, the teacher reflects, the student reflects. Of course, not through reflective writing. Uh, Saying far, we know, you know, all of us would like to die with reflective writing. But you no, know, this is many more ways of, of reflecting. In fact, to me, writing is just, you know, a, a part of it. But most of us are better reflecting in, in other ways, yeah? So I think I said question, I design, I create, I struggle, I collaborate, I try, I solve, I invent, I reflect. And I learn. Yeah, so this is actually uh, learner centeredness. Uh, of course, uh, this is very attractive, isn't it? But the next thing is actually how are we going to do this? Yeah. Uh, but basically, this is actually what happened. You know, our learners are going to change. Yeah? Our 21st century learners are going to change their role from passive learner to active one. Rather than reproducer of knowledge, you know, they would just regurgitate and vomit out all the knowledge in your, in a, you know, something like that. Now they produce their own knowledge. Yeah. They are no longer dependent learner. They are autonomous and they're independent. They are not just solitary learner. They actually collaborate most of the time. And they are not just exclusively learning content, but they are now learning more skill of, you know, thinking, uh, rationalizing, uh, and in terms of clinical reasoning, yeah, same part, it's more of reasoning and of course, communicating, you know, whatever the idea, yeah. So this is definitely more, yeah, uh, responsibility falling on the learner, yeah. So, Learner centeredness is also part of this. Is this definitely futuristic education where it is now personalized learning, just like medicine, uh, how we are going into more personalized uh, medicine? Yeah, 
but uh, the feature is really DOFA, yeah, whereby it is di uh, dynamic. Of course, we are always on the go, yeah, uh, and that's why every five years we have to look into our curriculum, isn't it, Zimfa? Yeah, and that's a that's huge, uh, you know, in, intensive uh, exercise here. Yeah? Of course, it has to be organic. In other words, we have to know what are the profiles of our learners, yeah. Uh, and what are the you know uh, you know this this picture is actually very uh, representative. You know you must know that seed that you are planting. You know uh, the 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 ground must be fertile enough. They must have enough water. Some plant needs uh, watering every day. Some would just need every two weeks. You know, and it has to be flexible. So once this something you know something um, might turn out. You know, it's not how you want it to be. You have to be agile enough and fluid enough to change. So this is this is actually part of you know uh, learning centeredness is part of futuristic education. Now for clinical education, I would like to go back to this. You know, there are two gifts we should give our students, our children. One is roots, and the other is wings. And I, I this is this is a, a generic uh, I think you know uh, rules. For us who are parents yeah, and also teachers. So for clinical education, the roots is this medical ethics and principles. So our PPA modules, Sengpa is still relevant. It's going to be relevant. It should be made relevant, you know. Uh, and of course, the wings are this, you know, the knowledge, the basic skill and competency. And of course, now the educational technology with all the digital uh, you know, advancements. Yeah. So the new wisdom is this. Okay, don't try to fix the student first, you know, fix ourselves. And, and the good teacher, the great teacher makes the poor student good and the good student superior. So you see, uh, you know, uh, colleagues, it's okay, you know, if your student is better than you. In fact, it should be better than you. Uh, and this is something that you need to tell your student. You know, you, you tell them that, you know what, you're going to be better than Prof. Har. And then, you know, like the student will say, you know, she pitch, they know, lah, Prof, cannot, lah, you know. No, 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 you have to be better than me because you know what? Because I am your teacher, okay? And, and usually, students will become better than their teacher, okay? So when our students fail, of course, we as teachers, we too have failed. But not to say that we have failed because we have not given them, you know, the, the model uh, questions or the, uh, the scheme of the answers. No, 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 that, that is not that's what I mean. It is because we might not have, you know, used the, uh, the, the right methods for each of our students, yeah? Okay. So now this is our part. You now for 21st century, you know, the paradigm is to be shifted. You know, we have to change our role rather than transmitter of knowledge. We become guide and facilitator of knowledge. We just facilitate. You know, now they don't even have to carry their textbook because you know the information is all there. But we are going to guide them to see which of all these resources are you know uh, uh, refutable enough or. You know, uh, and, and rather not just to go into some kinds of reference that is very dodgy or dubious, yeah? Uh, of course, we are controller of learning. And from control of learning, we become creator of learning environment. We just need to create the environment, you know, and this, your student will enjoy learning. We are, you know, from always being expert, yeah? we now become collaborator and co-learner. Uh, and and same far, to be honest with, with you, that bit of co-learning is actually, to me, one of the most difficult parts. To be seeing learning together with your student, to 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 say to, to your student, you know what I don't know that. <laughs> oh, that can be very difficult. Okay, and of course, rather than learning to use ICT, we use ICT to enhance learning, and rather than being didactic and boring, you know, uh, we are now very very in interactive and very experiential and exploratory. Yeah. So uh, I do not know whether it's my English here, but you know, uh, I, I took up this picture because. Well, this is actually when you become guided by the side. You are no longer the centered attention of your student. Your students are looking away. <laughs> They're looking not at you. And you might be like, like what Ismail is doing, just pointing out <laughs> uh, as the guide. Yeah? So uh, uh, the guide on the side here for the 21st century educator, you will anticipate the future and you will embrace future. You know, and you are not quite of much resistance to the future. Yeah, you are not afraid of the future. You yourself is is a lifelong learner. Yeah, and you foster peer relationship. You value that. You can teach and assess all level of learners. 
Uh, not just I, I just post graduate yeah, and the graduate to uh, orang lain. No, 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 no. If you are really a great teacher, you should be teaching the undergraduate, you know, not the postgraduate. Yeah. And we, we are able to sort of decide which would be effective and non-effective technology. Yeah? So uh, these two slides here, yeah, I'm gonna show you is one of my my favorite slides, yeah. The profile of a modern uh, teacher, yeah, and, and in the 21st century educators, we are not expert in technology, we are expert in the habits of mind. And, and, and you know, let me just read one by one. Yeah? We choose to be vulnerable, yeah, uh, uh, and we see ourselves as co learners, not, not just the superior teacher, you know. We allow ourselves to fail often, that is, yeah. We don't wait until we are expert to introduce anything new. We move into our students' world, even if it's foreign territory, you know, and we are, we are the immigrants, <laughs> okay? Uh, we run towards our area of weaknesses, not running away from it, okay? And this is, I think, the most vulnerable part. So in fact, it, it took, you know, a lot of courage for me, you know, to, to run to my own weaknesses, okay? And not to run away. Because the more natural way is actually to run away from it. You know how we did that very, very effectively? You know, when students ask us questions, they say, what do you think? Huh? What do you think? So you go back and read. <laughs> that is when you want to run away from your weaknesses. Okay. Now I guess we have to change and say, you know what? I I myself, you know, know very little about that. But let's let's uh, look up for it. Uh, maybe in two days' time we, we shall discuss this again. Okay. Uh, you know, we are comfortable not knowing what is going to happen. <laughs> okay. And we actually invite mistake into our life, um, and we because we know mistakes, yeah, uh, really our teacher. <clears throat> uh, we dream big, and we always ask why not. <laughs> okay, uh, we allow our student to teach each other and to teach us as well. Okay, uh, we step out of our comfort zone into our fear zone, Sengpa, and only then we can go into our learning zone and our growth zone. Yeah, we embrace changes. We celebrate all the diversity. You know. Um, we used to be very insecure, you know, people who might be better than us, we would like to shun them away, no. You know, these are people we need to invite into our life because, you know, uh, diversity is really strength. <laughs> it is really not liability. We feel secure uh, to ask our colleagues to help. You know, so it's, it's actually, you know, very easy to just uh, ask for your junior uh, colleague to take over because you have full confidence that they are also able to deliver. Uh, we will model really uh, really uh, resilient uh, perseverance and grit. The the student will see us keep bouncing back, you know, rather than you know uh, having this uh, fixed mindset, so that we don't take challenges. So our student will learn that that lesson as well. Okay, we question almost everything, yeah, and we believe that we can learn anything given the right attitude and effort. So this is actually in a in a nutshell. You, know, you become the lifelong learner, you know, uh, and you will role model this to your students. So let me just share with you, you know, from uh, uh, this uh, survey uh, where students are being asked uh, about the qualities of clinician educators that are being valued by them. Of course, in terms of personality, helpful, caring, warm, yeah, empathetic, yeah, and also hum humorous, flexible, and fair. Dependable, consistent. Consistent is very important. We have to be consistently not giving up on them. <laughs> okay. And of course, enthusiastic, motivated, and respectful. I think respectful is also important here because the student can really sense that you are not respecting them. And of course, they'll still be there in front of you, you know, nodding their head, yes, prof, yes, prof. But deep inside, you know, uh, you know, the sense of disrespect is coming in, you know. Now, of course, when students would value their clinician, their educators who, who really enjoy teaching, you, you can see that the teacher's eyes twinkles, you know, when, when she or he teaches, and, and they are eager to continue learning themselves, yeah, and they are committed to their students, yeah, and not just the good ones, but especially so students with difficulties. Remember, I'm saying student with difficulties, not problematic student. You know, uh, I guess when you become more learner centered, you start to use words which are uh, more uh, well. It might be the same. You know, problematic student, student with difficulties. But I would prefer use student with difficulties as uh, recommended by most of the literature because this is this change your attitude as well. You know, when you are seeing student with difficulties, it is more. You know, it, it actually brings up that that feeling of wanting to help. But if you 
you know, you, you are labeling a student as problematic student, you, you will come from the, you know, perspective of, you know, looking at him as or her as a problem, yeah? Okay. Uh, and of course, they are nuisance, okay? And of course, uh, we are willing to work with beginners and novices. This is, this is important. I guess for, you know, you know uh, as consultant, how many times when your new scrapness, for instance, yeah, in the OT, uh, uh, you, you, can, you can gauge whenever there's new scrapness, yeah, in still in orientation, then the, the sister would actually, you know, put her in, in your team, <laughs> in your surgery. Uh, and, or, you know, you would definitely have all just good people around you, you know, uh, definitely no beginners, no novices. Uh, if that is so, then I guess, you know, if you, you know, uh, always have one or two beginners or novices in your team, so you are definitely a dedicated teacher and people know that, you know, you don't really have to brag, you know, you don't really have to tell people how good you are, okay? Uh, you know, people just know it, okay? And of course, when it comes to leadership and interpersonal competencies, yeah, you have to be a good role model, you, you are aware of that, you know? You have to be very effective in your skill of communication. You have to respect your other peers. Yeah? So in this, in this case, I guess, you know, you never sort of talk back about your, your colleagues in front of your students. You know, or you don't criticize, you know, their management or the way they handle things, okay? You don't gossip, you know, with your students. Of course, your student will just be listening and they will say, yeah, 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 your prof, yeah, yes, 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 yes. But deep inside them say, ah, oh, yeah, you know, couple like again, this chick you can. Uh, and, and, you know, they, they will, of course, if they put you at 10 yeah, uh, in, the, in, the, in the rating score, uh, definitely you will have less scoring after that. You know, if you talk about your other colleagues uh, in front of your talk bad, I mean to say, you know, in front of your colleagues, in front of your students. So, uh, I guess we have to teach them how to compliment our, our uh, colleagues, you know, especially when they have been successful in doing something, talk about it and, and let the students see how proud you are, you know, with the achievement of others, okay? And of course, able to deal with conflicts, yeah, deal with patients who are angry, yeah? uh, families who are not satisfied, and they would like to see that. And of course, they want to see you involved in, in other than just medicine, you know, in other, uh, you know, community service, uh, you, you have other activities that make them feel proud of you, okay? So uh, now, uh, okay, Simpa, I have maybe one or two more slides here. So this is uh, another uh, advice, I, I would say. Well, this is a new paradigm? No, I don't think so. But this is just a reminder, okay? Uh, Steve Trumbull, my professor, I think Simpa knows him quite well as well. He says, Halina, you know, this advice was actually for me when we were having tea and, and he said, Halina, remember, don't teach when you are having one of these halts. When you are hungry, when you are angry, when you are lonely or late, or when you are tired. And I remember telling Steve, I said, Steve, most of the time I have all these four on board. <laughs> you know, you are, you are always hungry, okay? Uh, you are always late for your meal, kan? And then you are always angry, yeah? Sometimes you do not know who you are angry with. You're just feeling angry, kan? Um, and of course, yeah, uh, after long nights and... Uh, you feel lonely, <laughs> and of course, you are always late for another uh, another uh, appointment. Uh, and of course, don't talk about tiredness. And now, of course, with the with the COVID and everything, you know, even I, I guess uh, giving this session online has its own fatigue. You know, I do not know what you are doing now. You know, at least uh, Noniza switch on the camera. I can see lah. You know, uh, she's there, but I do not know what happened to all of you. The rest, you know. <laughs> uh, even Sengpa, I do not know whether he's there or not. Well, it's okay. Right? But, but this is actually, and, and it's a good reminder, you know. Uh, and I remember that 15 minute uh, uh, short teaching session, uh, Sengpa, I must be overwhelmed by all this. <laughs> and that's the reason why, you know, I was, I was really out of control. And the, the victim for that is really my student. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to leave you. Uh, as I said just now, some of you might have also heard. Uh, I have about 10 months more yeah, before I retire officially from UKM. Of course, from UKM, I, I'll be doing something else. Yeah? So this is, this is kind of like last lecture juga. Thank you for giving me this because I might not be able to present my Sharhan Perdana. You know? okay. But anyway, I would like to leave you uh, 
uh, with this, yeah, elixir. Yeah? And, you know, elixir means, you know, magical potions or designed to cure. So, E, uh, sorry, La Senfa, you have seen this for the umpteen time, kan? Uh, but it's good to, to <laughs> E is definitely exemplary. You know, we have to be role model. You know, we walk the talk, we talk the talk, and we walk the walk, <laughs> yeah? Um, and, and when you're talking about role model, uh, well, you can also be a good, uh, a bad role model, yeah, Senfa? So, you choose which role modeling you want to do, okay? Now, uh, the, the L stands for the three L, lifelong learning. Uh, and for this matter, in this new paradigm, we have to become co-learners, ladies and gentlemen. We are not just teachers, okay? And of course, uh, 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 people, they say that you are not indispensable. Yeah, true, but you know, to your student, you must make yourself irreplaceable. There is no another Prohar, there is no another Prof Tong in this whole wide world. There is only one Prof Tong Sengpa, okay? Uh, and, and make yourself unique and outstanding, okay? Um, and of course, X comes with excellence. Uh, always strive for the best. You know, uh, I'm sure this is not rocket science. But remember when you have your, your very inspiring teachers last time, one of the reasons is because that person keep on improving. Isn't it Senfa? You 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 are always surprised by you know the new things that that person is doing. You thought that you know she or he has it all, but they just go and push their you know their boundaries further, and that is actually you know uh, what you have to show uh, to your student. I is uh, the second I is integrity, uh, and this is actually the roots yeah Senfa, uh, not just the wing but also the roots. Uh, we have to have zero tolerance to plagiarism and cheating, especially in our medical and health uh, education. Really, to me, you know, there's there is no not even a single bit of tolerance in that. Okay, and of course, R is reflective for continuous self improvement. So, same for this is my last slide. <laughs> uh, and well, you know, Steve Martin. This is uh, one of my favorite comedian uh, actor. But this come, I think, in one of his film. This is I don't know whether this might be just the one of the lead, uh, one of the you know script. But he said, "Be so good, they can't ignore you." <laughs> okay, uh, and and I guess this is uh, a great motivation to all of us who know how good you are. People might realize that, people might not. But to me, you know, good people will will also notice that, <laughs> and those people who might not, they might not be able to see it because. They do not even have that within themselves. So, thank you for that. Thank you for for the time. Yeah, and I would like now to uh, give it back to you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Prof. I think um, you have. I've listened to your slide, but I guess it's always uh, something new. I missed last time. <laughs> <laughs> I dodged out quite a few things, but I, I guess really want to leave the floor open for all discussion because I think precious time for all of us who want to raise some question. Yeah. And um, I, I won't talk too much because yeah, I will give the stage to everybody rather than myself. Um, yeah. I really would like to encourage, you know, interaction. Don't yeah. write on the chat, lah, kan? Tak bad, lah. you know, just <laughs> uh, switch on your camera and let's, let's have this discussion. While they are thinking about a question, I was left out just now in the Zoom because uh, the, the Zoom reinstalled again. <laughs> five, okay. five minutes. All right. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Alama, all the big names in front of me now. Are you? Farah, Farah has raised a question. Okay, is it Farah? Hello, good afternoon. Boleh dengar? <laughs> boleh, boleh dengar. You Hi, Prof Tong, Prof Farah. Yes. Uh, sorry, Prof, my connection is very poor. It's okay. So it's okay. I, I, I like Prof Tong, I lost, I lost a little bit. Yang Alexa tu, I'm... Uh, now we lost. No, we, we lose her. <laughs> uh, yeah. What about the elixir, uh, Farah? Okay. Already that... started. You need to type. You need to type some chats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. But but here you have something to look at, uh, to to talk, to ask or comment or exchange. Uh, maybe that's yes. uh, I just show the elixir again. Ah. Yeah. So for anyone of you who would like to sort of take a snap of it, okay? Uh, uh, let me see. Is that you, Maya? No problem. Uh, there, that's the, the elixir. <laughs> so, 
Well, this is sometimes, you know, when you go for, you know, acronyms like this, it's easier to sort of remember. But I guess all of you, inshallah, and I know all of you, you have all this already, okay? It's already ingrained within you, okay? So it's, it's in within your software. So don't worry, just, just go on, go on, you know, making, making uh, you know, uh, uh, history and, and more uh, outstanding achievement. Okay, bye, yeah? yes? Uh, takde, thank you very much bro, for your excellent talk as always lah. Uh, I mean, uh, knowing that you say you're going to be retired soon, but I know we're going to listen you somewhere in other platform, definitely. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> so uh, even though I think we have uh, learned quite a few times about this learner-centered uh, approach, but yeah. really it's not easy to make it okay. into practice. We still find difficulty. Like I myself find it's not that easy to do. Mm -hmm practice it but I think it's a struggle just get improves um, by time lah I suppose yeah, yeah. Um, not sure when I can get it perfected I don't know but just keep trying so yeah. thank you very much for your sharing today Prof. Yeah thank you Maya. Yeah. Uh, I guess um, there's no question there but uh, maybe I can I can use this time kan, Sengfa, to sort of share the experience you know when when you want to start giving your student some kind of you know uh, responsibility to learn. Because students, uh, when they are so used to teacher-centeredness, and that is actually what happened in all our secondary and primary school, then right? So when they come to medical, uh, to university, suddenly kita kata, oh, learn a centeredness. Kalau kat buat, dia buat. You know? And, and, and it becomes so difficult because the students are so used to teacher-centeredness, kan? Right? Yeah? So they will be just waiting for you. And for some of you who have this habit of, you know, I ask questions, Prahar, but you know, they're, they're just so diam aja. You know what? Maybe it's high time for you to reflect. Do you usually answer all your questions? Find out. You tanya soalan. Lepas tu, you tunggu sekejap and then you jawab. <laughs> uh, that is actually the easiest way for you to keep your teacher-centeredness and the student enjoy it. Okay? So, sebabnya dia, dia you know, they, uh, of course, when you want to shift this paradigm, you have to give the responsibility to them and they do not like that. <laughs> okay? So, bila you, you tanya soalan, uh, this is my first lesson, yeah? when I ask question, I used to answer it, kan? Bagi maybe the most agaknya two minutes lah, itu pun dah rasa macam, oh, forever. Yeah? And I know they will not be able to answer. And so, I pun berlagak lah kat situ bagi jawapan. And I realise, uh, itulah dia student memang tak payah jawab, bayi, yeah? because they know you're going to give the answer anyway. So, they will just see looking at you with that dumb face, itu yang yang semarah tu. Uh, kan? Dan lah, you hulk pula, hungry, angry, late and tired. And you look at the stupid faces looking at you. And then you kata, tak apalah. Yeah? Next time lah pula, I apa, tak nak mengajar you hari ni. <laughs> so, macam tu lah. Yeah? And, and, and so, uh, can you start with that first? When you ask question, just wait for the answer. And of course, the student realise the changes, you know. Sebelum ni kan, bahaya, you tanya soalan, lepas tu jawab kan. Sekarang ni, bila you tanya soalan, you diam. Dan dia pun diam tunggu. Ada kuat betul tu Prof. Untuk <laughs> tahan dia nak jawab tu. <laughs> ya, yeah, kat situ lah ya kena. And then maybe you kata, you know what? If I answer this question for you, you will never learn. So tak apa, Prof Har tunggu kat sini. Kalau you tak jawab, uh, the whole round is just here lah. So I pun tengok dia orang. And that is the first skill I I I gather. I have that skill of just wait. Wait for the answer. And you know what? They will start answering. <laughs> They have to because otherwise kita tak berganjak kan? Uh, so, hmm. I think that is a simple tip lah. Uh, nak nak jadi nak jadi teacher centered, uh, from teacher centered to become learner centered. Prof Har, nak tanya juga. Okay, Nazira, daripada IIUM ya. Eh? Alright, silakan. Uh, um, I guess they also observe from us lah. I mean, if we were to say, uh, apa ni? Uh, that that I, we, I don't know about that. I have little knowledge about that. Can, um, and therefore, they also learn that it's okay not to know. Yeah. Jadi, bila mereka rasa, mereka pun ada ego mereka sendiri. Saya rasa kan, yeah. betul tak? Yeah. Jadi, bila, bila kita pun macam nampak semua tahu, kalau dia, maybe they do have questions, but they don't want others to feel that, that, that they don't know. And that's yeah. why the questions don't come from them. Whereas, yeah. when we make them discuss, it's, it's like, no one is right or wrong. It's just your 
your experience is just something that you but i find it very hard to get the students engaged in discussions when i try mm. it out yeah. very few would want to discuss but yeah. if i individually talk to them they have a lot of ideas mm. so i think it's a lot about a fear of negative evaluation among mm. many of the students mm. they fear that people will evaluate them negatively so mm. how do we get about that because it's a culture Yeah. Like you said, macam daripada primary and secondary school hmm. pun dah inculcated kan? Nah, yeah. Kalau tanya banyak sangat, nak ada kursi ke? Atau dulu-dulu lah, main. <laughs> okay, okay, Nazira. Okay, uh, saya pun just to introduce uh, Dr. Nazira is actually a psychologist. So, uh, you know, actually I think she knows all the the answer to the question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, alright. Uh, Nazira, I'm going to give you a, a very, you know, practical tips. Uh, usually when you have this discussion, uh, kan, you dah jadi guide by the side kan? So you pun macam kawan-kawan dengan budak-budak tu. But as long as you are in that circle, you know, you know there are eight of, of you all, katalah, and you are one of them in that, there will be no discussion because you all just you know, look at you. So this is what I learned when I had the opportunity to uh, conduct and uh, you know facilitate uh, uh, problem-based learning, PBL. Um, I, I, there are so many ways of doing it, guys. Kan, but I stick to the old teaching that I cannot be there uh, in that circle. So I will always pull myself out of it, even though, kan, uh, Nazira, I feel like, macam, Ih, nak you duduk kat situ. But <laughs> the moment you duduk situ, they will be just looking at you. So Please. I would suggest they would actually have a lot to discuss if you are out of that circle. I you, see. You, so you have in your teaching too. You must have that op- that opportunity whereby they can discuss among each other. And this is a very good way of doing it team based learning sebenarnya kan uh, Senfa TBL uh, I think I'm Prof Senfa pun biasa Akmal here is an expert in that even now ada ETBL lagi ya yeah. uh, so tapi bila team based learning ni dia student memang ada preparation dia Nazira and then uh, in order biasalah student kan kalau kita bagi apa-apa dia tak baca so kita kata there will be a test individual readiness assurance test uh, yang ini ni test yang dia orang kena buat sendiri sekejap aja and then they have a group uh, apa uh, apa jirat ataupun tirat ya yeah? maknanya dekat situ team pula so the same question but they answer together and during this time you are not within them tau ah uh, yeah? so mm. yang itu i nampak sangat engaging and student mm. love that ah uh, kan lepas tu bila dia dah ada this knowledge and skill you give them case study ataupun assignment uh, and and dekat sini this is where your you as a facilitator can actually put in. Jadi kan my my lecture yang selalu sejam tu bila team based learning ni I cakap tak sampai lim, uh, apa setengah jam. Yang selalu kadang hmm. sejam sampai kering-kering tekak tu kan uh, uh, ni uh, Nazira sekarang ni I tinggal 20 minit aja cakap. Hmm. Yeah, because you just need to give that because the student has learned on themselves. So there's actually many ways lah ya yeah, to yeah. help you in terms of ni. Tu something that you can learn insyaallah. Okay. Terima kasih Nazira. I, I have a burning question. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we know that uh, in medical and education and as well as clinical teaching we have two things actually one is we want to teach them knowledge and skills mm-hmm. that's what you just said mm-hmm. the other one is is actually changing people's behavior all right which is mm-hmm. the attitude professionalism the ppd and now education 4.0 also talk about similar almost similar thing about mm-hmm. you know collaborative learning and you know uh, uh, attitude change and things like that but I, I just want to highlight that learning is actually a social science subject, a psychological and social science subject, yeah. and we all are very trained in very science. I mean, core science, not the social science. So it become a little bit difficult for us to grasp some of the behavioral change we intended to put on our our student. And uh, with that, I I may just want to ask Prof. I mean, with with that, is there any things that we want to read? I know. Um, In order to guide us, we, you highlighted something like theory in the, in the first few slides, which I find very attractive, which is going to bridge us into how are we going to innovatively create learning and teaching experience. Do you have some recommendation of some theory that we can read a little bit, not too much, because we have a lot to read? <laughs> okay, yes, I can. Uh, I guess, Sengfa, we have to be the learner first. Yes. So we have to always reflect on our practices every day. Which would be the the a very important teaching point for us to bring it to to your student, and I guess yeah, uh, the most important is actually you you see we learn more when we have 
uh, you know, uh, let's say problems rather than when we are, uh, you know, uh, doing it the right way. <laughs> and and we learn more from our mistake. Lah. Okay, so um, uh, I guess um, this is when you will use all those mistakes as a learning point for your learners. And they will actually learn it more that, uh, from, you know, giving a good example. Oh, I've done this. You know, this is how I actually uh, 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 include my patient. Uh, yeah, that is, you know, a bit, a bit bragging, I would say, you know, but, but it, it, is, it is more important for the student to see how do we actually deal with our shortcoming? Uh, you know, uh, most, uh, let's say, let's talk about confidentiality. They might be, you know, an instant where you breach confidentiality okay? and, and you realize that you have done that. Uh, and how do you actually uh, try to negate all those, all those, uh, you know, uh, bad things that you have done as, as a teacher, uh, as a medical uh, 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 physician and all. Uh, and so this would be the learning point. So um, I guess that is actually the uh, learning on the go. Uh, and if you have an opportunity, of course, and sometimes and say, uh, this is what prof, I remember my professor when I asked him, Prof, kita ni tak ada lesson plan ke? Don't we have any perancangan pengajaran? You know, because my 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 husband will have this this big book kan? Lesson plan kan? So, I said, eh takkan lah, I ni tak ada lesson plan. So, I remember asking that maybe in my first year as a, as a, uh, uh, as a teacher lah. Yeah, dah jadi specialist. So, I tanya, eh, eh Prof, kita tak ada lesson plan ke? Uh, and then, ah, you know, I remember he, he said that. Hey, how can we plan our teaching? Our teaching is always distributed, you know, opportunistic, haphazard, and unpredictable. I remember that, you know, that's the sequence. He said, our teaching, uh, our clinical teaching is almost always haphazard. Uh, what did I say just now? Uh, opportunistic, you know, haphazard, and unpredictable. And so, how can we plan it again? So, itulah yang I pegang sampai habis. And I said, baik, I pergi Melbourne. <laughs> And did my 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 uh, yeah, uh, and and during that time I realized that we actually have the plan inside our brain, but we must learn now how to put it in you know in paper or on the paper so that we can actually yeah teach this to another person. Otherwise, you know, I, I die today. So far, I will bring all my lesson plan with me lah. Okay, and so that is it. Another one, the one that I I think you you mentioned very you know it's like a, a spot on. Uh, education is really social science, you know, and it is more of qualitative research, tau. And kita pula is quantitative, kan? I used to look down upon, you know, I this is my confession, lah, kan? I used to look down upon quantitative, uh, qualitative, sing, huh? And I know you are the qualitative uh, president, you know, uh, uh, president of the qualitative uh, study in, uh, of Malaysia. So, but um, that was the thing where I wasn't taught that, you know, qualitative is the one that that reads between the lines. Uh, we are so, you know, whenever we make our uh, review, 75% of our student uh, likes the, uh, or, uh, you know, you give the statement, right? uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, module has helped me uh, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, um, mastering or more or less, you know, getting what is uh, being uh, outlined. 75% uh, yes, strongly yes, isn't it? That? Setuju, eh? strongly agree in the Likert scale. So, okay lah. But that 25% is more important in qualitative. You need to actually sit and have an in-depth analysis uh, interview with that 25% who says no. And, and only then you can improve. So actually, uh, the, the, the other shift that I made is actually going more into qualitative. I fall in love with qualitative. And that was actually the one that pushed me into my master uh, uh, apa, uh, degree in clinical education to Sengfa. And I become a believer and a proponent <laughs> uh, and an admirer of uh, qualitative. And I guess now it's actually the mix method. The quantity that is going to give you the overview, but the qualitative is also important. So I think this is another, and I guess I, I this is my advice. Eh? I discovered that quite late uh, in, in, my, in my, you know, uh, profession or my, my path as a teacher, but it's okay. You know, for those of you who start just starting the journey, I would like to invite you to cross over and uh, cross over in the sense that, okay, have 
some kind of qualitative uh, uh, experience, a full qualitative. My paper, uh, uh, my thesis for my dissertation for the masters was purely qualitative. I have to actually, you know, do the interview. So far, I have to transcribe that. that. Uh, for the whole three days, I keep on listening to the same person, uh, you know, voices and, and to see that Timothy analysis and all. It was really an experience and I love it. Okay, so I think that is actually one of uh, one of the uh, the shift that we have to make as as a teacher. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, it's, I am totally aware of the time. It's three thirty three, but uh, we can have a little. But those who need to leave because of their commitment, uh, please feel free, and uh, we can have a little chat. Uh, another five minutes, I would conclude everything. So would we uh, would that allow? Yeah. So. Um, Yes, we have talked about reflection, become a learner. Again, those are very crucial point. And I'm not the one who know everything. <laughs> and I think the most important take home message I can read from the slide is that we want to inculcate learning um, from our student. If they acquire the skills of continuous learning, mm -hmm. it's okay because knowledge will come to their head anytime in the future. And uh, how do we impart that? I heard a lot of active learning, the term active learning and reflective learning all come into play. So um, that's, I, I, have, I concluded that way. Um, I, I've learned new things again um, all throughout it. And uh, any other comment you want to make? And before we end, another two, three minutes. Uh, I, will, I will try oh. to share the slide here uh, yep. so that anyone of you can go back with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Farah, Farah raised a hand. I'm not too sure. Farah, you have some. Think the uh, yeah, Prof, sorry, uh, I got cut off earlier. So <laughs> you must come back, yes. I, I'm gonna quickly just ask the question. It's a um, prof, uh, thanks again very much, Prof. It's a uh, it's about your slide on roots and wings. Okay. So that was a, a lovely slide. Um my soalan is very simple. What about first of all, I totally agree we have to improve ourselves, but sometimes our students we are who trust us, they share their frustration at our colleagues who maybe uh, do not uh, appreciate yeah, medical education uh, changes or adaptation. Mm -hmm. So my soalan is, what? how can we help our colleagues who only see the wings, but without seeing the importance of the roots? Okay. So you had clearly mentioned roots is all your PPA, PPD, ethics, etc. But the wings is all your clinical knowledge, but they're only focused on clinical because they say it's their job for uh, a good surgeon is only clinical. Okay. Yeah, so this is the traditional teaching that I'm sure we all have encountered before. And they look yeah. down on quality, they look down on medical education. So we can't change a lot of people. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. But how can we improve things for our students? Thank you, Prof. Okay, thanks, Farah. I think that, that was also my concern as the head of medical education when I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, having that responsibility. I, I can see my HOD now, Muhammad Norman, with that picture of you know, flapping uh, Mal uh, Malaysian's flag, okay? Uh, and, and the concern is, actually, how do we bring, you know, uh, many more people on board, okay? So far, this is really something that uh, you can only try, you can only bring the horse to the, to the water, but you cannot force you know, the horse to drink. But uh, I guess we have enough people, like this good crowd, who are really passionate about teaching. So this, you know, Farah, would be, you know, the, the gemstone for, for our, uh, our faculty and in fact for medical education in the country, there would be people who might not be in, in, you know, in the same boat, but it's okay. Actually, you know what? Um, they, they have their roots as well, you know, Farah? And, and we want to tap on their roots. Um, they, they're not just having their wings, they have their roots as well. So uh, we might not have their involvement directly, but we can actually have that indirectly, yeah? Okay. So as I remember the role modeling, you know, the students have to see the good and the not so good role model as well. So, uh, and so this is, and the students are very smart, okay? And they can actually see, um, uh, I, well, well, I think I, I, well, aku lagi 10 bulan je kan, nak retire, can just say whatever I like. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the students have this observation and this happened very often, uh, Farah. I do not know, I'm sure, you know, you're bound to, 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 to encounter this as well. The student will say, uh, Prof, pasal apa? Uh, cikgu yang hajin ajar we all, kan? All this cikgu, yelah, you know, uh, doctor tu, doctor ni, who will always spend their evening teaching us. Dia ni tak nak pangkat lah. You know, dia orang ni tak dapat-dapat Prof tu. 
Ya prof apa Semua-semua ni kami tak kenal <laughs> Sorry Farah But then That's the privilege of being You know uh, Just about 10, 10 <laughs> more months away Now, Anyway And that is an observation Okay so Cumanya How do you answer that question To me that is so So fundamentally important Okay Then you can say that Okay This is this is the the reality of life, okay. Um, uh, remember the expectation just now. So you have your own expectation. Your organization have their own expectation. Uh, and for the time being, yeah, expectation most probably is more for those you know who publish more or yeah to have all the wings, yeah. Uh, but uh, maybe not so much on the education level. <laughs> okay, uh, but it's okay actually, Farah. Uh, yeah, I, I remember when I have to make a very difficult decision to actually relocate myself from ONG department to medical education department. That happened in 2007. Uh, lepas I balik balik haji sebenarnya Sengfa, masa I kat Padang Arafah tu, <laughs> yeah, I I really pray to Allah. Uh, you know, I I macam dekat dekat persimpangan sekarang ni, so kat mana ni? You know, I, I have very limited time, so I just want to do what's best that I can do. And definitely the calling is more for edu medical education. So I made that decision. I remember and I never regretted that. Cumanya kan Farah, the feeling of <clears throat> being a clinician, you are always in the limelight. You are always in the center stage. Uh, I, I I love my clinical practice. Uh, I, I love my patients and I know my patients love me too. Uh, at that time kan, dia punya decision is either to practice outside and you know, have your own practice, yeah, and I can see my friends are really doing very well, uh, and you know, I'm getting, I'm starting to get very sick and tired of people putting prices on my head, isn't it, saying, hey, what are you doing still here in UKM lah, you know, easily berapa ribu a month on your head, you know, kan? nanti kan jumpa lagi 2-3 bulan, Farah, dia cakap macam tu juga, so sampai I kata, look, look, I'm going to stay in UKM, And 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 don't put any price on my head because it's priceless. Ah, so come let's do. You know, so so uh, because because there is there is really something yang as if kita do at university ni something yang apa lah you ni kan. So okay, lepas tu dia tak cakap lagi lah. So that is another difficulty. And another one is to be now in a medical education, and I feel like I am now at the backstage. You know, I am now the one yang kalau analogy ni, I yang tukang tarik uh, apa uh, langsir tu you know tirai tu and maybe you know the lights uh, shine it on other people i feel that way juga tau farah and and that was an an easy and nice feeling but then i realized that you know um being a teacher is all that i want to do <laughs> okay and i want to be and i i shouldn't allow all these uh, things to sort of you know uh, uh, distract me And, and hence here I am and masa tu I tengok on PPD kan uh, PPD masa tu tak ada orang nak tengok kan Norman uh, so tak apalah uh, saya pas remember you know uh, uh, PPD tak ada orang nak so bagilah ke I so I realize one more thing you know uh, Farah always look for your blue ocean always look at that places where no people tak ada pergi lagi have that pioneering spirit okay remember that quotes kan yang kata do not go where the path may lead you know instead You know, go where there's no path and leave a trail. And let me say, don't just leave a trail. But but you kena pancang juga tau. You kena put on your signage so that other people can follow through. Okay, Farah, don't worry. Uh, you know, you are already you know a great teacher in making that. Or if not, you are already one. Okay? Uh, and insyaAllah, kita, you know, we we capitalize on our strength. Our friends who might just looking into the wings, it's okay. Fortunately, they are there, you know, so that we can take off. But we are here to sort of, you know, keep everyone on the ground. Okay, tak? <laughs> right. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Okay. okay. Um, yep, that's great uh, message. But I think next 10 months, um, I'm going to tap you more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry with selfish agenda for the faculty. Anyway, thank you very much for all this participating in the discussion. Thanks. And uh, we definitely have a lot to share. And uh, the slides are there. And we'll put up the QR code for members who are from UKM to uh, lock in their attendance too. Uh, Zaki will help us that. Uh, with that, have a great evening. Um, so we have some other agenda to attend to. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank, I'll you, see you. thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you, Zaki. Okay. So I can leave now, yeah? Yep. Okay, far, far, right. okay uh, bye. Yeah. Okay, my HOD pun dah nampak dah muka, so I'm happy. <laughs>
Okay. Oh, Dr. Alias. Thank you, Dr. Prof. Okay, right. Thanks, Norman. Okay, bye. Thank you, Prof. Thank you.